All right, here we are with Jordan Drake from DP Review TV, at least for now. Thank you, Jordan, for being here. Of course, on the Dave. Golden Hour show. <laughs> There's a lot going on with you and Chris right now. Yeah, more than just us. I mean, like DP Review, um, just for some background for people who may not know, um, probably the biggest photo gear website in the world is shutting down. Uh, I don't know. Have you talked to anyone about this already on the pod, Dave? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Connor and I actually, I'll, I'll maybe play a clip now, but Connor and I did a recording of the show on Monday for just our standard podcast recording. And the news broke as we were recording that you guys, you, you know, were leaving DP Review. And then I was like, oh my gosh, I was kind of grieving that. And then all of a sudden, as we were recording, the announcement for the Petapixel thing came out. I was like, whoa. So it was like, I'll play that, you know, in the podcast here. But um yeah so connor and i talked about it and we kind of you know i've been talking i talked to my friend jevin dovey this morning about it and like there's people there's rumblings in the whole industry it's kind of an era has come to an end yeah exactly i mean i wouldn't be doing what i do now if it wasn't for dp review i got a job at a camera store and didn't know anything about photographic cameras so i just lived on that website for a while kind of you know figuring everything out yeah. um and now here yeah I, I direct a photography youtube show so it really is all due to that and uh, you know that's why we went over in the first place i love and respect those people they're amazing so uh yeah it's it's been actually a really tough week like it has been an emotional roller coaster you know there's a lot of support from everybody we're excited that we've got a place to bring the show yeah. But uh, yeah, it's tough, man, to see something that meant so much and know it's going away. I wanted to kind of talk about Deep Review and kind of let, you know, let some of the intro of this show be a place where we can kind of remember it. Um, you kind of hinted at it, but what are some of the things if we if we were to pour one out for Deep Review, which by the way, full context, this website has a heritage of, is it 25 years? Is that it, it was about to turn 25. Yeah. Wow. So the, the heritage of the site is is unheard of in internet land. 25 years is an eternity uh, for, for a website. Um, so that alone is really special. And then um, I guess, what was it 2015? Amazon purchased the, the, the company. Is that correct? It was all the way back in 2007, actually. Oh, my goodness. Uh, okay. It you took them a little started. while to move over um, to, okay. to America. but uh, And then, yeah, we started in 2018 there. Okay, 2018. Copy. Um, so, you know, again, for maybe some video shooters who may not know, because I do think DP Review does have a, a heavy emphasis on photography, though as hybrid cameras have come into existence, it's it's grown, obviously, as as both. And you're the face of the video uh, side on the, on the YouTube channel, of course. But for photographers, the forum on DP Review in particular is extremely vast. And I don't know if you can really search for any lens and camera combination without a DP Review forum link showing up as your first result on Google. It's, it's crazy. I don't know if you can really search for any lens and camera combination without a DP Review forum link showing up as your first result on Google. It's, it's crazy. Yeah, it, it is. And, and there's a lot of talk about, you know, this is, they're going to try and archive the website and stuff, but that's not going to impact you when you're searching for something. And that's where, you know, it's the more casual users. They're losing this vast amount of information there. Uh, you know, there, there is talk of people trying to save the site. I hope someone can do something like that. But honestly, I'm actually not an employee. So I'm not even privy to all the information that's gotcha. going on that the actual staff there here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that is probably going to be one of the biggest legacies is, uh, every time I'm trying to figure out a question, that is where I went. Uh, and that applies to, they did have video forums there as well. Um, and when I'm comparing two cameras, again, not just photography, their video test scene is absolutely invaluable for mm-hmm. what I do. And I, I mean, I don't know, am I going to go back to the camera store bookstore to shoot the shelves again? Like we did back <laughs> in the camera store days to yes, compare cameras. It's, it's going to be quite a change, man. And then of course the, the super valuable, um, studio, uh, comparison chart that, uh, DP review so famously has, can you walk us through what that was and, and how valuable that tool is? Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Now it went through a few iterations through the years, but the most recent one I think has been around for over a decade and they shoot that chart with every camera at every ISO 
at base ISO pushed to different levels um, with the bright lights on and then with a single tungsten bulb on as well uh, <laughs> so they can check how it does in actual low light s- situations. I mean, I've been there in the offices when they're working on it and it is just a huge amount of work. And, you know, if you're comparing a camera, cameras 10 years apart, drop it into the studio scene, it's still going to line up like the part of the <laughs> chart that you're zoomed Great. in on and stuff. It's just an insane amount of mm. like work goes into making that consistent. And yeah, I was there when they were, we went back to Seattle to kind of say goodbye, shoot a short documentary, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh. I think people will find that very valuable, but uh, yeah, I was there when they were shooting that test chart scene uh, wow. for one of the last times ever. And <laughs> it's, it's pretty amazing. And, that's just such a valuable tool for so many photographers. Um, who's going to pick that up? Are you guys going to make a version of the site? Is Gerald Undone going to start doing that on his uh, website? <laughs> I mean, nothing to that extent. It's yeah, it, it, it is extremely difficult. We are upgrading our own chart that we use for lens tests and we'll be using it for some other stuff now. Cool. Testing for moire and things. That is something where Chris and I are actively working on having a solution so we can still get really nice, precise numbers when we get cameras into test. I guess just overall, I mean, I don't know if you saw Tony Northup's uh, rant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then I think Jared Poland, uh, posted a video this morning as well. It seems like just the whole community is kind of mourning the loss of this extremely valuable and historic website. Yeah. I mean, it it was tough for me because, you know, we'd known for a few weeks, so I had gone through my initial (laughs) mourning phase, uh, so it's tough because we have, you know, on our, our video announcement and stuff like that, you know, it, in hindsight might seem a bit tone deaf. Um, you know, I think we're still joking and stuff like that. And I was forgetting how I heard when I first heard the news, which mm-hmm. is kind of devastated. And that's the case for a lot of people who rely on that website. So, yeah. uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. And you know, all the people who work at DP review are the best people I've worked with in my life. So it's, wow. I hope that all of them can find, you know, a good place to go from here because they're absolute masters at what they do. Oh, absolutely. They're the best in the entire industry. I mean, it's like, it's, it's been the number one for so long and you know, the, the best writers, uh, in this field work there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's very interesting. Um, not to mention the hundreds of videos that you guys, you and Chris have done on the, the YouTube channel. Um, obviously you guys were employed, you know, to do this. So it's, it's not, you know, the end of the world for you, you guys got paid to do that. And, and obviously we can discuss what's moving on forward, but, um, I, I would hope that they'll keep the YouTube channel around, like you said in your video, um, just disable comments or something and just let it exist as an archive, you know? I mean, that would be my best case scenario would be yeah. that they let that stay up. Um, I know that they're worried about, you know, brand confusion because we're saying like, go check out this website for all the studio sure. scenes and sample images. <laughs> I get that, but it's just, it doesn't cost them a cent to host. I understand like the studio scene is oh, tens of hundreds of thousands of raw images. You know, mm. there's a lot there. But the YouTube stuff, Google's already covering the hosting on that. So, you know, True. let it live. And at least then I can still screen grab the studio scene once in a while in the future when I got to look back at an old <laughs> yeah. camera, because that's the only way I'm going to get access to it. It's crazy. Absolutely. Um, yeah, you, you bring up a, an interesting point. Um, do you think from Amazon's, you know, manato- managerial, the fact that they own the, the site, They were just, I'm sure somebody just looked at the numbers and said, what are we spending on this? And what is it bringing in? Um, What what were the kind of corporate reasons you think for this? um, I mean, I I can't speak to them. That's like I said, I'm not an employee. I didn't know the decisions. I mean, it came right after they announced, you know, a bunch of layoffs. Yeah. uh, And that's what's actually quoted in the... um, in the announcement as well, you know, I'm sure they just said, Hey, this department needs to lose this many people. And, you know, when you think about buying something from Amazon, you don't think about editorially independent camera review websites, you know, it it doesn't seem like it's their bread and butter. Um, But I mean, it's not, it would be one thing if I'd seen the readership and the engagement just constantly declining. Right. But it was still a very, popular, very active website. Uh, so that makes it even all the more shocking, right? 
Do you think, I wonder if the, the people in charge of this decision have been shocked over the last, you know, two days uh, and like, wow, people actually care about this thing. Like, I wonder if they'd be interested in in selling it or letting it, letting the site fold into, say, a site like Petapixel or, or something like that. I'm sure websites like Petapixel, obviously, we'll, we'll discuss more, uh, are thrilled about this because there's going to be a void left uh, for a, a place for people to, to have conversation and to have these types of uh, tests and reviews. So, you know, there is an optimistic angle to it that either they will let the site just completely go away or maybe somebody would buy it. I don't know. I, I don't think Amazon needs anybody's money really. So who knows? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what is there. It wasn't ever really brought up when we were, okay. they were talking to us as like the possibility of a sale, but who knows? I mean, it's out of my hand and out of my pay grade. Sure. Uh, sure. But yeah, I mean, there's certainly opportunity for other websites, but and there's people from DP Review that hopefully go on to produce more awesome stuff, but it's the legacy of it that is so yeah. you know upsetting to everybody. I'm sure. Let me ask you, Jordan. Uh, what what over the last was it been uh, since 2018 since you guys? We almost what? hit five years. Uh, we so started years. right at the end of April in 2018. So you 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 and Chris have been creating f- on YouTube for years uh, alongside Kai and Locke. I think a, a similar path of length. I mean, was it 12, 13, 14 years of creating on YouTube now? Yeah, uh, we found our old um, store tour video that was 15 years ago. That wasn't released on YouTube yet, but yeah, I'd say 14 years we've been on there. So for the last five years at DP Review, how have you grown as a as a creator and as a, a videographer, filmmaker? What are some of the things that you can look back on these last five years and really um, think fondly of? Like, what are, what are some things that you feel you've you've grown and, and learned from? I mean, I, th- I think so much of it is just prioritizing what's important to the audience. Um, if you look at some of those early videos that we did for DP Review, I mean, there's a whole bunch of, there's gimbals on the opening episode, there's car cams, um, you know, there's some drone stuff. Um, and, but the, and we really felt like we needed to hit all the technical stuff. So it was, you know, a lot of running through the specs and things like that, which we still do. Um, to mm-hmm. a degree, but but I do feel like we would do like a little flourish of humor at the start, and then okay, let's get serious. We're reviewing stuff, and over time, the show has really shifted much more into you know a looser feel and a lot more emphasis on Chris and my back and forth. One of the last videos we posted before the announcement was just the two of us, Siskel and Ebert, arguing about focal length. You know, um, <laughs> and people seem to really love and respond to that. So that is definitely something we're going to be bringing over to Petapixel. What are we going to be seeing um, on the DP Review TV channel over the next, what, month, I guess, that we'll continue to see stuff? Are you guys... Not even, yeah. It's like two and a half weeks, basically, Okay, uh, where we'll still be dropping stuff on there. So it is going to be a lot of retrospective content with one big review that uh, I can't talk about yet, but I'm very yeah. excited about. The last review for DP Review will be an, a, a doozy. Okay. Uh, and, and yeah, I, I was able to go back to Seattle and talk to current and former staff, um, you know, film around the lab and uh, the offices there and stuff. So we will have a, you know, documentary about what DP review okay. was and why it matters. That'll be coming out there at this, around that same time. What have you put, you dropped a video, I think today, uh, some of your favorite products that you've reviewed for DP review. And I, I loved seeing two of some of my favorite products uh, mentioned, one being the OM1 and the Olympus EM1 Mark III, which I share with uh, with Chris on that, which I wonder if you were even reluct- reluctant to even put that in at the beginning, because it's such a hated camera <laughs> for I a mean, lot of people. I have I have fought with the OM1. Like I had a tough time on our final <laughs> review. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, yeah. So not my favorite. Uh, but I understand it's good for what it does. Like when we went and shot the Leica M11 in New York at the time, the OM1 wasn't available, but I had an EM1X cause there's just, you know, a yeah. balance of like the stabilization and the durability and the portability of those cameras, even though I had the biggest one they ever made is just unmatched. Yeah. So it does definitely have a sweet spot. I just, I want to go like, you know shake the om engineers a little bit and just be like (laughs) you are so close the hardware is perfect the sensor is great just make a few small tweaks and you will have the greatest travel camera ever made and it might still be but it could be so much better if they would just we'll get there 
<laughs> yeah, maybe. Although now, now that Panasonic has phase detect, uh, future Panasonic Micro Four Thirds cameras will essentially do what I was always wanting Olympus to do. So, <laughs> so we'll see about that. But the other product that you guys mentioned in your video, your number one is the beautiful 10 to 25 uh, uh, Micro Four Thirds lens. I love that lens. There's nothing else like it on the market. Yeah, I, I try to keep it close. I was about to reach over and grab it, but I think it's still uh, <laughs> upstairs by the studio. I, I'm shocked that they haven't expanded that to other formats. Uh, just yeah. having, like I say in the video, you know, a stepless aperture ring, focus breathing corrected, mechanical mm -hmm. focus clutch. Uh, even in, like the F1.7 constant aperture was the big talking point, but you know, in full frame terms, that's like an F3.5. Uh, yeah. So it's still very doable to do something like that. Um, but yeah, it's all the other stuff. It's got a beautiful look to it. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of my favorite lenses and, you know, okay. I'm still shooting micro four thirds all the time. And I would say the biggest reason for that is the glass. Yeah, that's a wonderful lens. Do you remember those? Uh, was it was it Vedra that company that made those tiny oh, yeah. little Micro Four Thirds primes? Those were pretty cool too, but they're overpriced and uh, not relevant anymore. But at the time, it was so exciting because those were. I mean, there were Rokinons and things, but those were the first like budget designed for their sensor type cinema lenses. Um, and I do think they really led to what we're seeing now where there's just so many options. If you want like a yeah. manual focus cinema lens, you can get a nice set for under 2,500 where, mm -hmm. you know, I remember being thrilled that the Sony Cine Altas, it was like, you can get a six lens kit for 18 grand. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. No, thanks. Yeah. That's a, it was crazy. Yeah. You're right. You're right. We're, we're living a very luxurious time to be a creator. That's for sure. Okay, so we, we began the journey, Chris and Jordan, uh, 15 years ago with the Camera Store TV when they were, and you can go listen to my interviews with Jordan and Chris on this show. I'll link them in the show notes, uh, where we discussed the whole historic uh, journey. That then led to DP Review TV, which we're, we're seeing the end of. And that leads us now to the future, which is Petapixel. The YouTube channel uh, will be now hosted by Jordan and Chris. Tell us about Petapixel. And this is your third channel that you've hosted. Almost as many as me. So I wouldn't go even close to that far. Okay. <laughs> Before you know it, you're going to change your name. and No, give, absolutely. No, no. Give, I'm happy with Jordan Drake. It's a power name. Be a good lawyer name too. Uh, oh, you're right. <laughs> Jordan Drake. <laughs> you're right. That is a good lawyer name. Never thought of that. Uh, yeah. yeah I, Petapixel. So yeah, we've known the people from Petapixel for a long time. Um, and actually Jaron Schneider, the editor in chief there has been a good friend. We've, he's been to a few different outlets. So I've known him at press events for close to a decade at this point. I think he's a really good friend of ours. And, uh, yeah, over, he'd always just been like, Hey, you know, if any, everything's not working out great at DP review, we'd love to have you over here, you know? <laughs> um, so we've had that conversation for, you know, years. Um, and yeah, when this, when this news came out, that was just the natural first place, um, Chris and I were thinking about. So, um, yeah, and it does let us change up the format of the show a little bit. I can't speak to it's very still very much under wraps but sure. we have a huge thing coming up that is very different from anything we've ever done uh with awesome. camera store or dp review um and it's kind of nice we are going to be stopping publishing at dp review on april 10th our stuff is going to start rolling out in may so it, there's a bit of a window there where we can actually yeah. spend multiple days making <laughs> something bigger badder and better so that's yeah. going to be really really cool for us you know, I, I've seen Jordan work. Uh, we were in Japan together at the S5 uh, 2 announcement, or it wasn't an announcement, but it was a uh, an event. And then we had to hold on to it, the videos for a while. But I've seen you in the corner on your computer, just like going crazy fast. Is Are there things that you've learned from working with DP Review, like those stressful edit so the, you know, like, are there things like that that are going to change or are you guys going to continue to just be monsters and, and post things as quickly as possible and be a part of that whole stressful, um, quick turnaround world? Or is that, you know, how does that, how does that scale as you continue to age? Cause I know for me, the more kids I have, which by the way, my, my wife is pregnant with our third child. So oh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. So as we add more children to our 
family life. And as my the numbers of my age get older, I continue to want to stay up super late less and less. Um, so what are your thoughts on that as you move forward? Have you guys made any ground rules? Like we're not doing all nighters or like, I mean, do you have an editor? I mean, press events will always be all nighters. That is the nature (laughs) of the beast. You know that with the exception of like that Panasonic event where we actually had time to like go home and produce content and have cogent thoughts, uh, by the time the video was released, that was really exciting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, what I've learned from working with DP review and you'll hear it over and over everyone who's seen them at press events and stuff like that, the work ethic there is just crazy. You know, there is a very high standard for, okay, we're going to get this out quick, but more importantly, it has to be accurate. And, mm-hmm. uh, and you can see, you know, that if there's something that seems slightly odd, they'll get on the phone with the engineers, you know, um, they will mm-hmm. test and retest something to make, if a manufacturer's claim seems like, eh, I don't know if that's totally true. They will absolutely test it before they just say like, Oh, that's, that's bogus. You know, so moving forward, backed up. so moving forward, I'm, you'll gonna- be less accurate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to have yeah a bunch of the smartest people in the world fact checking everything that I put out. But that is part of the appeal of going to Petapixel is Jaron's great and he's still going to be seeing our work before it comes in this public. So I still get that second set of eyes. Well, third, because Chris and I are both looking at all this stuff as well. But just when we're testing equipment, it's really important to us to make sure that what we say is accurate and it's going to be useful for people out there. Um, you know, at the camera store, there were certainly some times where it's just like, well, I'm seeing this. I'm not sure if we're not a hundred percent sure why this is going on or what's up, but it's embargo day and we're going to push the button and just hope we're <laughs> right, you know, and that's terrifying. Um, and I know that's what most creators are doing on YouTube, right? You don't have someone else as a sound yeah. board to bounce it off of. Is the channel brand new? Cause uh, no, it did. Uh, they put some, some smaller pieces out. They've tried to start a couple things in the past. Uh, there were some videos of like a GoPro getting melted by lava and a shark eating a GoPro that actually had a ton of views cool. uh, that they did before. And that's why when we came over, I think they already had like 11,000 subs, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so, so that was there, but um, we just decided for this initial period, we're just going to unlist the older videos, make it just clean a whole lot of yeah. our dumb faces, you know, as much as possible. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> You know what? So people I really, know, because I don't want them going to Petapixel and then they're like, this is just like a shark eating a GoPro. I better not subscribe to this yeah. one. We want them to know yeah, where the dumb faces will be. No, yeah. I, I think that was the right move. Um, and if you're telling me that three days ago, the channel only had 10,000 subs, I'm looking at it right now. It has 60,000 subscribers, jo- Jordan. Look at the power of influence that you guys hold. That's amazing, man. That's yeah, awesome. I, it, we were shocked. Like it, it has been really. That's why I say like it's been such an emotional roller coaster. Is the support for everybody has just been crazy, and it's not just everything public. Like our announcement sure. video, I think is like fifteen hundred comments or something like that. But I'm just getting you know all the time texts and direct messages from people that I had no idea even watched the show that are mm-hmm. you know, firing off uh, some well wishes and stuff like that, making sure we're okay. So. That's very uh, yeah, awesome. it's and that's that's why I want to stick with the photo video community. Like you've seen on the press events, like there's some big personalities, but it's a <laughs> bunch of good people. What do you mean? <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm not going to name mean names. <laughs> who who in particular? <laughs> no, not on yeah. this show to make enemies today. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's there's other avenues that YouTube has opened up since you guys hopped over to DP Review. That uh, two of them being uh, shorts and also podcasts. I don't know if you saw the announcement about yes. a week and a half ago. But YouTube is treating both shorts and podcasts completely separately algorithmically from your mainline content. So that means you could have a podcast on your main channel and it's not going to damage the algorithm in terms of pumping out your main videos. Is that something that you and Chris have ever discussed doing a podcast? And obviously contractually, I'm sure you guys have agreements with, you know, DP Review and now Petapixel. So obviously you're going to fulfill the requirements of what you're doing, but you know, is there any incentive or, or reason for you guys to consider a podcast? Is that something you've thought about? Yeah. I mean, my big struggle has always been like, I've always thought video podcasts are a 
terrible format because I will <laughs> sit in, watch five minutes of it, then I'll go jump in my car and then try to scrub to where I was before mm-hmm. I stopped watch. So the idea that this will move over to um, YouTube Music and then mm-hmm. you'll just be able to you know watch it when you can have eyes um, on it and then you know, pop it in the earbud and keep going right from where you left off. That's very compelling for me, as well as everyone who's doing it well, you know, just like you, it's a separate channel for that. So you don't hurt Mm. your algorithm. So the ability to do that, like to do extra work, that's good for your audience and not be penalized on your YouTube channel. seems like a no brainer. They should have figured out a long time ago, but that's very exciting. And yeah, it is absolutely something that Chris and I are discussing. It's nothing we can talk about at this point, but I know he wants to argue with me about (laughs) <laughs> movies, food, television, and what have you. So that would yeah, be a yeah. great forum for us to do that as well as oh, discussing absolutely. the latest photo video news. Because if we do it in a YouTube it. episode, I'm just going to cut it out like that. That's gone. <laughs> as you've worked with Chris, I mean, on a real note, you guys are very good friends, I would imagine. How have, how has your relationship grown over the years? Were you guys just literally co-workers at the beginning and now it's evolved into this? Yeah, I mean, we were just coworkers who like to, you know, shoot the shit about um, movies. So oh, wow, uh, yeah. that's how we our friendship kind of got started. Uh, he's a bit of a cinephile as well, so we were discussing that they wanted to do a store tour to embed on the website. If you can imagine, YouTube was still <laughs> like such not. A, they're like, we think we have the bandwidth. We can put a two minute yeah. video on the main page. So we shot that and it's kind of fun if you watch it. Cause like my, my wife, Evelyn is in there. Um, Dave Paul, who's her co-host on the camera store TV is also in it. It's kind of funny how many faces pop up there. Um, but uh, yeah, we shot that and immediately realized, okay, Chris is very comfortable being on camera. You know uh, he was already a teacher at that point. He just, you know, threw the camera on. He's like, yeah, here's a camera store. It's about where you see me in that video. And I look like I'm being interrogated. Like (laughs) you can't see the off screen weapon that they're threatening me with, but I just look terrified uh, through it. You know, and now I can talk pretty comfortably on camera. Back then, no. You guys have really grown up together. I mean, 15 years is a, that's a, that's half, you know, half of your life ish, a quarter of your life. Totally. (laughs) We don't need to throw numbers out there, but (laughs) But yeah, it is huge. And I mean, it's the only way it was ever going to work, especially in those early days, because we were working at the store full time. And then on our evenings and time off, we would go work on the show. If we didn't get along, that just wouldn't be sustainable. And, Mm -hmm. you know, we're fortunate as well. Like Our wives are best friends. So we can do like a family trip that we do a little bit of filming on it. And it's not like that's awesome. The worst thing ever. You know, we're right out there. We can have a good time and then we can go get some extra work done. Kids uh, are same age sort of too. Is that right? Yeah. Well, my son and his daughter, Maddie are very similar age and they're, they're quite tight as well, but uh, yeah, awesome. it is kind of, it is a big, happy family. Well, yeah. I mean, we're, we're all thrilled that it's not going away that, I think that's part of the reason why the DP review announcement that you guys did seemed kind of like, what's, why are they smiling? Like, <laughs> Yeah, because you guys knew what was happening with Petapixel, and so like the announcement of DP Review happened for a couple hours before the Petapixel announcement, and we're all just like scrambling, like, "What's going to happen to Chris and Jordan? What's going to yeah. happen?" I, I know, and I, I, when we were first putting the the outline together for that announcement video, it was very serious and dour and you know we were like well we have to lighten this up a little bit and honestly in hindsight i think we may have gone a little bit too far in that one direction <laughs> okay. uh mistakes okay. were made <laughs> it's, it's totally fine. But, but the joy is in the petapixel announcement video is definitely there i mean we get to keep doing what we love here's a question that i just have to ask you mm-hmm. what did the thought cross your mind for you guys to just go independent yeah, I, absolutely. We looked a lot at the numbers, talked to, you know, the announcement wasn't out there. So we can't just be like, hey, friends, um, roughly, what does an ad? Because people don't really recognize this, but we didn't have ads on DP Review, not even yeah. like YouTube pre-roll or anything like that. That was one of the things that was exciting to us about moving over there is it's like, mm. you're editorially independent. There will be no advertising, anything like that. Uh, what we didn't realize is no one cares. Like we were like, Hey, we don't do ads. And everyone's like, I never noticed that there was no ads in in there. So, um, 
but no, we were we were looking at that, um, you know, for because for a lot of creators, they only need to provide for themselves. You know, you're in a situation like with Connor there for a bit where you have to look at it like how much can we make and then divide that in half. Um, so that that was certainly going to be a tough stretch because we didn't have that much lead time to do that. But more more to the point, like why we've always worked for larger outfits, like why I wanted to work for DP review is I like being in a collaborative environment. You know, I like Mm -hmm. to have somebody that I can run ideas off of. And on top of that, I want to focus on making videos. Um, That's what I love doing. You know, I like, I love shooting. I love editing though, slightly less than I love shooting. Um, (laughs) that, (laughs) That process is really enjoyable to me. I would rather be focusing on that than, you know, if we're working for ourselves, technically, you know, I am a small business, but a lot of the other stuff is off my hands if I work for, you know, a, another group. And what's really exciting to me about Petapixel is they're independent, you know, they're not owned by a bigger company. So, mm-hmm. you know, short of everyone not going to the website anymore, which I can't see happening, especially now that there's especially less places now. to go for photo stuff, you know, it, we're not going to get the rug pulled out of us and, you know, be in this awful this situation that we are right now. And yeah, it's, like everybody show your appreciation for Petapixel because, yeah, you know, looking at those numbers, it was very scary for Chris and I, and we didn't know if the show would keep going, uh, to be totally honest. And wow. now it does, and maybe it will be even better. So yeah, uh, that's cool too. Like, it's always nice to have a little bit of a change up makes you look at things with fresh eyes and we're taking on different types of projects now. I don't know anything about change and, and uh, moving Yeah, on. why am I explaining this to you? <laughs> you should just pop in front of your pulpit and you know, preach. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I mean, I just gave my channel to Connor. Did you see that? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I already went over and gave him a congrats. No, I, I know. Like You've done it many times, and I'm sure you've thought through it because you're in the same position with your family and everything like that. Like it's, It has to be yeah. a very calculated decision. It's not, it's not just affecting me. And y- exactly. you talked earlier about like killing yourself, um, you know, and we <laughs> did that in the camera store days. Like I mm. could not have done what I did there, you know, with the family. And I mean, Chris and I still work – I mean, you've seen us on press trips, you know, Yeah, but the kids we're, we're willing to bust our trip. asses, but we do want to make sure that we actually have time to, you know, be family. Yeah, exactly. And this is, uh, I, I've had older, wiser men who have, have spoken into my life and you just got to remember if you're a parent of, of young children in particular, this is a window of time that will only exist for this period of time. And that may mean that I'm going to sacrifice the future of my potential career in the moment. But those moments I've seen interviews with, like, I think I saw one recently on YouTube. Uh, it was an interview with a billionaire and it was like, do you have any regrets? Uh, and he said, that period of time when my children were young, I worked probably too much and I regret that. I will never get that back again. My kids are now adults and that time when they were super cute and cuddly and that, that time where you're really building that relationship with, with young ones, you know, that goes away. So you always make fun of me for talking about kids. You got me going on a tangent, (laughs) Sorry, but everybody's having kids now. Gerald's got a baby now. Uh, Josh Yo's a dad. I'm, you know, I'm a dad. We're all turning into sappy dads. I, I hate, I hate to be this way, but a lot of you are now of the age. This, uh, this younger <laughs> generation of YouTube creators, you're, you're hitting that. You know, <laughs> yeah. it's very, it's, it's interesting because I think the American dream, or let's just say the Western dream, because you're in Canada, uh, is to just pursue career. And I think a lot of people lose sight of how valuable and how fulfilling being a father and a husband and and being a a normal, kind, moral human being is. Yeah. I don't don't think you have to have a family by any means. You know, if you know, if you, you're not excited to have kids, do not by any circumstances, (laughs) (laughs) but, uh, but no, you need, you need to balance it with something. And that's something I really struggled with for the last little bit here. Uh, like, but now I'm back you know, hopefully I'll be doing a short film again soon. Um, you know, I, I put my old, like some of the old musicians I used to play with back in the day, we have a band, you know, jam once every oh, few awesome. weeks or whatever, cause they're all dads too. But yeah, you just need to have something beside that. And then when I get back to work, 
I'm just, I'm excited about it again. It's fresh and it's reinvigorating. The last time we talked to you, um, we, we did, we did talk about the short film that you made. Um, are there any cinematography, uh, aspirations and, and goals and dreams you have currently as you go into this next stage of life? Well, my friend Levi Hallwell that I've done the last two films I worked on, uh, it was really having a tough time writing during COVID, which I totally understand. Like you, he's one of those people where you got to talk to other people and get excited about something and then go home and let it percolate. But he's got a new script that's really interesting. We're trying to figure out financing the scale of it. And, you know, I, I don't know if I'll be a cinematographer on it. That's a huge time commitment and everything. But I told him like, whatever happens, I'll be there, you know, mm -hmm. throwing around C stands or I don't know if he needs a makeup artist. I've never done it, but whatever. <laughs> I can throw blush on people. We'll figure it out. Uh, I just want to help in whatever way I can. Cause being on set is the best vibe in the world. Like it, I always yeah. liken it to high school theater where it's just like, we don't yeah. know what we're doing, but we're going to figure it out. Everybody let's go. It's, it's so absolutely. So exciting. So yeah, I'm hoping that we'll see that again soon. Yeah. Traditional filmmaking is such a collaborative sport and it's so much fun to be involved in that. And, you know, I've been blessed over the years pre my YouTube career to be involved in small forums here in Nashville, but um, you kind of lose some of that in the YouTube space because when you are especially doing the types of videos that we've done, it's like, you just have the product, you got to get it out get it done as quickly as possible. And there are cinematography, you know, skills that come into play there. And you can definitely look at like Josh Yeo and be like, wow, yeah, he, he's making short films on the make art now channel. Yeah. But the, the type of stuff that we do just constantly just new thing, talk about it, upload, like you kind of have to throw some of those things out the window and just get the, get the job done and do it at, to the best of your ability. How do you, how do you balance that as a, you know, filmmaker, you know, <laughs> doing the, the gear stuff? Do you try to have fun with little things? I mean, I know you throw in all sorts of fun little things here and there, especially yeah, like the, the puppets. It, <laughs> well, the puppets don't require great cinematic depth of knowledge. It's, it's storytelling. It's though. harder than you think. Like we're just like, oh, we'll just have the. But it's like, no, you have to remember to move their mouths when you're talking, and it's a complicated <laughs> art form. And huge kudos to Jim Henson Studios. Those people, man, they got it going on. But uh, you know, it's funny when we were way back at the camera store days when we started getting Sony like Cine Altas, the F3, the F5, F55. Like their cinema cameras were like, okay, let's try and up the production value of the camera store TV. So we went out with like four people, you know, we had reflectors, some silks, we had a boom. Um, and immediately, even though our reviews hadn't changed, you know, it's, it's actually one of Chris's harshest reviews was the first one we did that way. Um, everyone was like, this feels sponsored. This feels fake. I mm. think YouTube has a different Diet, like aesthetic compared yeah. to like commercial production or, you know, bringing some of that filmmaking stuff to it. Uh, so it's better if it's a little rough around the edges. You've said it so many times on your podcast, you know, look at the biggest YouTubers. They aren't the ones with the best production values a mm -hmm. lot of the time. Um, that said, I still want to make myself happy. So <laughs> yeah, I, I want to have something that's like fun or challenging in every video, if at all possible, as long as it's not the two of us sitting on the couch debating something because yes. it's cold outside. If we're in the field, <laughs> I want to try and mix things up a little bit. I think you guys have totally balanced that and, and done that art form beautifully because it has that handmade feel to it, but you're always experimenting with new lenses, new cameras. You're always you know advancing your color correcting and LUTs and stuff. And you, you helped me with uh, the S5 II video because you have a LUT that you like to use. What uh, What is it again? The nicest one? Nicest. Or? Yeah. I, I, yeah. Always giving Panasonic a hard time. Why do you have nice and nicest? Why don't you just make... <laughs> Leave, leave the nice alone. But uh, yeah, I use that all the time. And again, you didn't need my help because if you've managed to make things with the OM1 shot on OM log <laughs> look good, then you're a master colorist, my friend. I did. I, I really didn't. Battled with that. <laughs> I feel like uh, the EM1 Mark III had better color than the OM1, uh, even though the OM1 has better specs. Um, yeah. So I sold the OM1 a uh, couple couple months ago. So it's it's out of my life, but I still miss it. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I love their flat profile. It's one of my favorites. But again, with the OM1, you throw away all the detail as soon as mm-hmm. you switch over there. So yeah, just just give me flat profile and 10 bit. I'll be happy. I don't I need know. to mess around with OM log. But I'm cr- I'm crossing my fingers for a new pin F because man, that camera is sexy. And oh, what is that? Is that EM? Is that that's an, OM1 an o- that's an OM1? I'm just giving it the stink eye right now. <laughs> wow, amazing. <laughs> I, uh, what do I have laying around here? I've got my uh, R50, the Canon R50. I did a bunch of videos with that this week. That's not a bad little camera. They really m- kind of fixed the M50. It's basically a, a fixed M50. Well, now. you were the M50 guy, so I know, you, exactly. have to, you have to keep it going with the R50. <laughs> Dude, I made like five M50 videos and they all performed really well for some reason. So uh, that, that camera blew up the yeah. Kinotika channel, that's for sure. I was going to say on the topic of the scrappy YouTube stuff, I do think that's true for, for um, sp- especially the entertainment stuff. Uh, I heard a, uh, a YouTube consultant guy talk about this recently. He said, people are so burnt out from overproduced commercialized content that anything that feels handmade just has this f- vibe of authenticity. And he started showing examples of even Logan Paul promoting prime and instead of doing a really expensive, flashy commercial, he hand wrote stuff on a piece of paper that said, this is Prime and this is Gatorade. Here's how much sugar is in Gatorade. Here's how much sugar is in Prime. And everything was just written on little index cards. And he's like, see how authentic this feels? It feels handmade because Logan literally just wrote it down. And you know he could have spent a million dollars on a, on a you know, Daniel Schiffer style commercial, you know, but he chose not to, and it's obviously working. And a lot of those creators just have that intuitive sense about it. Um, and does that apply to our niche? I don't, I'm not sure. I think there's a way to do it in a handmade way without it looking bad. You know, Marquez Brownlee does, does it really well, I think. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's one of the outliers to that because his show mm-hmm. looks fantastic and is perfectly produced. But I think it's telling that the biggest reactions for like new things we've brought to the show this year uh, is a puppet. I mean, you know, custom puppets, <laughs> they're, they're not cheap, but they're not, they're not, you know, an airy light by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, and then the other one is my evil, well, evil, my self-righteous twin brother, Gordon, which is I change my jacket and I do like a <laughs> yeah. very half-assed composite on it. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, it feels a little homespun, but it's, it's a different thing from us and the audience loves it. So, you know, that, that compared to. It's good to hear. Yeah. Cause I, I want to experiment with the superhero character that I've had. I might start implementing that into my content as well. That's, that's good to hear that that worked. I, did you notice my little nod to you in my S five two video? I appreciate the fetal position. Yeah. We've kind of let that go, but I don't know, maybe it'll have to make a return appearance in <laughs> Petapix. I it literally hit a point where I'm like, I don't enjoy in the middle of the winter having to go lay on the ground while we get the exposure settings right every single video that we make. Uh, so we, we did our calendar, the 12 months of Jordan crying, which you can uh-huh. still get on DP review for a short while longer. Yeah. Download it, print it off, and uh, yet yeah, you can have a crying Jordan every month. <laughs> What are some of the things that you wish could change about YouTube with just all this experience? And especially now that you're going into a new venture again, is there anything that you just despise about being a YouTuber? I mean, so much of it is just inherent to the platform. Like I do wish there was less emphasis on thumbnails, you know, initial watch time, that kind of stuff. Like it, it forces you you know, I don't want to say clickbait, but it forces you to have a style that works very well on that platform. And if you don't utilize it, you are punishing yourself. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I wish there was something where it was, you know, even just be able to rate halfway through a video or something like, oh, I'm still watching and finding this informative or something as opposed to, you know, just the thumbs up, thumbs down. And I know they ask you occasionally like, hey, why did you respond to this video yeah. thumbs up or thumbs down i don't know i just think the algorithm needs to be changed in order for youtube as a platform to work with more different kinds of content like long form there's no reason 
you should be punished for putting a feature length thing on YouTube. But how many of those have ever done well? You know, people will go to Netflix or another platform for it. And I mean, YouTube could be a haven for documentary filmmakers, reach an enormous audience without having to go through a production company. It's disappointing to me that that hasn't happened. And it's only because of, you know, the algorithm it's, it's not encouraging that type of content on it. So I would like to see that. And letting the views be public for everyone too. It, it's and the subscribers. It kind of is showing, you know, oh, this video only has two hundred views. This is must be a trash video. So there's like this perceived idea, like, yeah, like maybe maybe YouTube in the future, if we're talking like you know ten years down the line, they could maybe start allowing even like narrative uh, documentaries or, or not narrative documentaries, narrative shows or mm-hmm. like documentaries and and you just check a a tab that categorizes it and says this is a documentary just like the podcast tab and just like the shorts tab there could be a little check mark and it's like we're going to treat this as a feature length film and promote it to those people and it will not damage other content that this creator does on the channel i don't i don't know i think as youtube evolves those types of things may happen because yeah, I, I think I, it makes perfect sense. I mean, they clearly look at music very differently than they do with any other type of YouTube content on there. Um, yeah. You know, with the expectation, oh, the regular algorithm doesn't apply because people are going to be playing this thing over and over and over because we do not buy albums and support artists anymore. God forbid <laughs> we should ever do that. So yeah, exactly. Uh, but they've, the algorithm has responded in that way. So they could do it. I'd love to just see a tab on the side. Like you said, you know, mm-hmm. features, television, documentaries, um, you know. Because I think it's inevitable that traditional television will continue to collapse and and maybe eventually go away completely with the exception being maybe local news and sports. But dude, I just hosted an Oscar party and the amount of hassle to try and get live TV back into yeah. my life. How did you do calling, it? calling up the cable company and they're like, you want to do what you want to add television for <laughs> one day. Is this that is what you had to do? Sorry. <laughs> Is that what you ended up doing or did you just subscribe to YouTube TV for, for the month or what uh, some, someone had like an online key for CTV, which is a Canadian broadcaster who had the, li- anyways, it okay. was a process. It was very stressful for us while we're trying to get set up <laughs> for a party to wonder like, Oh, are we actually going to stream this wow. damn thing? Yeah. And then, I mean, you look at the, the numbers in terms of the revenue that movies like, um, you know, uh, Top Gun made and compare it to the Oscar winning films. It's, the difference is insane. I mean, th- those Oscar winning and Oscar nominated films are not even making, you know, a hundred million dollars sometimes. Um, whereas these big movies are getting, you know, Avatar broke $2.3 billion for the Avatar 2 movie. So it's really a spectacle that people are expecting to get out of their house now to go to the theater. Yeah, um, it's a specific type of movie that people are willing to leave for. I mean, th- that said, the movie that won Everything Everywhere All at Once is like the biggest A24 movie ever. Like, I'd say this is one of the most mainstream Oscars in history. Like, I, I think movie going culture is coming back a little bit. Just talking to younger people, I feel that way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I could go, I could do this for like three hours if you want, Dave. But uh, <laughs> maybe, you know what? When you mentioned that you and Chris bonded over. Uh, being cinephiles, maybe that's your forum that you could you could create a podcast, uh, and this is your your first independent show, and that way you're not needing to have any pressure of the camera industry, and you two could do a, a, a cinephile podcast. I would listen to that. Oh, it would get way too heated. We'd say things to each other <laughs> that we could never take back. Yeah, I think the the future of the the movie theater industry is looking semi grim. I mean, I went to the theater recently and it was just dead in there. There was no nobody was there. Um, but the movie industry, I think, is doing well ish. I mean, I don't know if the budgets are being cut uh, and everything's just going to streaming, which it, it, it kind of seems to be the case. But that doesn't mean that you know good stories can't come out of of that. I mean, obviously HBO Max has been crushing it with this. Uh, current series with the uh, um, Last of Us, and then, of course, you know Netflix has a couple of their shows. But I mean, YouTube. Uh, I'm sure you saw the stat. YouTube has been viewed more on televisions than Netflix over the last couple of months. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I think YouTube is gonna come in clutch here. 
Uh, I'm glad I'm on that platform, not running a little (laughs) indie studio with my like grown up pretentious tastes where I'm like, this is a masterpiece. And they're like, no one wants to leave their couch to watch that. You fool. So I'm in the right place here. Well, that's, that's what Gordon does, right? That's what he's a part of. Oh no. He just works on big, but I'm sure he worked on avatar that. (laughs) Gordon trick. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jordan, for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure to talk and I'm just honored to to have you on to discuss this amazing news, uh, sad news uh, that we can all kind of mourn the loss of a wonderful site, but also uh, optimistic and exciting for the future with Petapixel. So everybody go check out Jordan and Chris on Petapixel and give them a follow on Twitter for some fun memes and snarky takes. And, uh, I would really appreciate that. Thank you so much, Jordan, for coming on the show. And for I being will a f- always come on. We've been doing this for a while now. So <laughs> yes. thank you for your support over the years. And uh, hopefully I'll talk to you again soon.